we don't get it right. God called for the first time. This young man went to respond based on his custodian tradition. He knew when he heard the voice, it was Eli calling. He went there. Here I am. Are you calling me? The old man said, I did not call you. He went there for the second time. Are you calling me? The old man said, I am. I did not call you. The third time, the man said, please don't walk on my nerves. I did not call you. Then Eli realized his connection with the divine because he recognized how God is calling. Eli became that uh, leader who provides leadership. He became a facilitator to facilitate that process and say, now if you hear the voice, you say, here I am. Lord, your servant is listening. Who knows, perhaps this morning, God is calling you to become Eli, to facilitate this spiritual growth. Maybe God is calling you to become the one that is going to usher the next generation into becoming the people God wants them to become. At this point, my brothers and my sisters, let me emphasize an aspect that I find a little bit interesting, that there was a relationship between Eli and Samuel. That relationship helped to facilitate because Eli recognized God calling Samuel and Eli stepped in as a facilitator. Sometimes maybe God is calling us to go outside of ourselves. Maybe God is calling us out of our preferences. The high calling of God, God is calling us to something that is bigger than ourselves. Becoming a spiritual facilitator so that the glory of God can be revealed. Now God is calling, many times when we talk about calling, we only see this from a religious perspective. You know, when I talk about call, you are saying, well, I'm not called because we are used to think calling is only about spiritual or religious uh, function. Maybe God is calling some to become clergy, monk, nuns, or spiritual leaders. But this morning, I want to remind you, calling is bigger than just a religious function. Maybe God is calling you to become a mentor in the area of education. Some of you have been teachers or professors. Maybe God is calling you to, to be in the area of education. Maybe God is calling you in the area of health care because God calls people to become health care professionals, therapists, counselors, uh, nurses. God is calling these people. Maybe God is calling you not to this profession uh, that we know, maybe it's about alleviating suffering. God is calling you to this sacred call of healing the body, the mind, and the spirit. Maybe God is calling you to be that person that someone can call. A friend of mine sent me a text and say, it does not matter what time you call me. It can be 2 a.m., it can be 4 a.m. I would rather you call me than me receiving a call that you are no longer there. I want just you to know I'm available to listen. I'm available to walk the walk with you. I'm available to listen to your story. My friend called me because this was the time another clergy killed himself because he was overwhelmed. And my friend was afraid, he was concerned about my life, and he said, I want you to call me, and my job is not to judge you. I don't care, I want you to call me. I want you to know I'm available. I'm available to listen. I'm available to hear your story. Maybe God is calling us in this church to become that person for one another. God is calling us to a higher calling, my brothers and my sisters, where we stand in each other's shoes. We carry the burden of one another. Now I know people will say, well, I don't like 
The way the General Conference made decision, I don't like someone say, I don't want to be a Methodist anymore. I told that person it's not about being Methodist. We are Christian first. Can you see your calling as a Christian, that God is calling you to be an extension of God's presence in the world? Forget about General Conference. Forget about the General Church. Can we talk about Fourth Chapel and what God is calling us to do in this community? We have a call. How are you responding? It's not about theology. It's about relationship. It's about the life of people in this community that we can touch, that we can become. The presence of God, oh, my brothers and my sisters, I pray that this church will become a better church because you have heard the call. I pray that the world will become a better place because you have heard the voice of God and you have decided to respond. Maybe this morning God is calling you. God is calling you to something bigger than yourself. Eli recognized the calling and he said to the young man, now that you have heard, if you hear again, oh, make yourself available. I thank God because God Always come to us, oh my brothers and my sisters, God of many chances. God of many chances. God who calls not only one time, but God calls again, and God calls again, and God calls again. Yes, this text tells us that God can have a divine communication with us. God can talk to anybody. Now, God does not impose his will on us. When I'm talking about God calling, I want you to know God still cares about your freedom because God will put an idea, a passion in your mind, in your heart, a burden upon your shoulder. There are people who cares more about justice. There are people who cares more about the truth. There are people who cares more about grace. You know, there are people, it does not matter whatever you tell them, they care about grace. I am among those ones. My brothers and my sisters, I've realized that grace is available for everyone. And this I believe. If you don't agree with me, just remember the cross. The man on the cross who lived a very bad life, who did not meet the requirement of people, but yet he called Jesus and said, remember me. And Jesus said to him, today you'll be with me in paradise. The grace of God is available. It is beyond our description. The grace of God is beyond our limitation. It's beyond our preferences, beyond our categories. You know, I choose my friend. There are folks that I know. I may not associate myself with them. But the fact that I choose not to associate myself with them does not mean God will also say, oh, since Emmanuel does not associate it with these people, God's grace is not available for them. No, God's grace is available beyond my categories, beyond my preferences. My calling is to embrace that grace and say, I'm going to extend that grace of God to my brothers and my sisters. I may not get it. I may not understand it for the first time. I may not get it like Elijah, but God's grace is available for everybody. I want you to identify your calling. Why on earth are you here for? It's not by mistake that you are at Ford Chapel. This is your spiritual family. We are your brothers and your sisters. Come on, somebody. Amen. We are brothers and sisters. This is our family. Every family, there are challenges, there are misunderstandings, there are issues in every family. Let's not give up on our family. Let's just not give up on our family. We have a call. God is calling us to something bigger than ourselves. How are you responding? Because God is calling you. There will be moments in life where the call of God is a challenge, but yet you are going to offer yourself like Jesus Christ in Gethsemane. He said, this cap is too much. It's too much for me, but God, not my will, but your will. In Gethsemane, he did not want to die, but he offered himself for God. 
God is not going to impose God's will on us, but we are to embrace it because when we embrace the path, it becomes our destiny. There is the sovereignty of God and there is our will. God cares about us. This is why God is calling us so that we may offer ourselves to God willingly. That we are going to do what God is calling us to do. Beyond yourself. What is God calling you to do? It's not by mistake that you are here. Find your call. Jesus Christ, find his call in Gethsemane. Little boy Samuel heard the voice and he responded and said, Here I am. Speak, Lord, I'm listening. What voice are you listening to? I know we live in a time where there are many voices that require, need our attention. But yet, my brothers and my sisters, we must discern the voice of the Lord as we strive. We must hear the voice of God and be willing to follow the path. God is calling us. We are the body of Christ. Do not forget that. We are the extensions of God's presence in the world. Remember the prayer we pray to God. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. We are the body of Christ. Don't just forget that. We are the body of Christ. On the night the Lord gave up himself for us, he took the bread. He broke the bread. And he said, take and eat, this is my body. This broken body is my body, broken for you. Not a perfect body, but I give you my body. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup. After he's given thanks, he gave it to the disciple and said, Take and drink. This is my blood. Pour out for the forgiveness of your sin. The blood of the new covenant. God has vested in us. God made God available. God went out of his way. God of many chances. God who's calling. Even when we don't get it, God is still calling us, my brothers and my sisters. As we come to the Lord's table, may we come as we respond and say, here I am. Here I am, Lord, I'm listening. As we partake to the body of Christ and as we share the cup of our salvation, may we respond and say, Lord, here I am. I'm listening. Amen. Those who help, would you please come forward? Yes, here we are. Lord, we are listening. 